a way to use a computer. I hear that, and that's an that's a absolutely appropriate answer to my question. But I guess I'm trying to get at the sense of whether this is incremental or whether it's radical, even in the next year. I believe that someday we will make something that qualifies as an AGI by whatever fuzzy definition you want. The world will have a two-week freakout, and then people will go on with their lives. Sam Altman just said the world will only have a two-week freakout when we get to AGI. That's quite a statement to make. One thing I say a lot is no one knows what happens next. And I can't see to the other side of that event horizon with any detail, but it does seem like the deep human motivations will not go anywhere. This is when people start getting alarmed. We have no idea. That was Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, the man steering billions of dollars and the world's brightest minds toward a future he openly admits he cannot see. And if the person building the most powerful technology in history doesn't know what will happen, we should be very, very alarmed. Because while he has no idea, other pioneers, like the godfather of AI himself, are terrified of what they do know. One is selling you a fantasy of progress. The other is trying to warn you of a nightmare. By the end of this video, you will understand which story is real. We're going to break down their candid admissions and secret plans to expose the one thing they all agree on. The race for AGI is now completely out of control. And it all starts with another part of that same clip, a bizarrely specific prediction Altman made about how we'll all react when his creation finally arrives. Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI, believes that when a machine becomes smarter than all of humanity, we'll basically get over it in a couple of weeks. Why would he say something so completely insane? Is he just arrogant or does he know something that we don't? He's not saying AGI isn't a big deal. He's saying we're already flying into the black hole. The reality is the freak out will only last two weeks because the revolution is happening in slow motion. Think of it like a frog in a pot of slowly boiling water. A few years ago, AI art was a blurry mess. Now it's winning art competitions. GPT-4 was magic. Then Claude 3 was better. Then GPT-4.0 could see and talk. Each update is another degree of heat. By the time we realize the water is boiling, we'll be cooked. The freakout is short because he believes by the time AGI arrives, it'll be too late to be truly shocked. Okay, so we're being conditioned to accept it. That makes a terrifying kind of sense, but it forces an even more important question. If the people building it realize they've gone too far, if they see they're creating a monster, can't they just shut it down? Is there a kill switch? For weeks, I assume there must be, until I found this clip. And Almond's answer is probably not the one you want to hear. If you were ever in that room and you thought to yourself, this is getting dangerous, and this could actually have consequences that I would not want upon the world, would you then shout stop, and would you stop? There's no like one big magic red button we have that blows up the data center, which I think some people sort of assume exists. There's no one big magic red button. That is the single most important sentence for understanding this entire situation. The idea that we can pull the plug is a complete fantasy, and I can show you exactly why. Just this month, two of OpenAI's top researchers, Jason Wee and Hyung Wan Chung, reportedly left. Their Slack profiles were deactivated. Where did they go? They were poached by Mark Zuckerberg to join Meta's new super intelligence lab. This isn't just corporate drama, this is the proof. The AI isn't a box in a basement, it's a network of human minds. And those minds are now part of a global hyper-competitive arms race. If OpenAI tried to hit a red button, its best scientists, the ones who hold the real secrets, would simply walk across the street to a competitor who is offering them millions to keep building. So there's no kill switch because the top talent can just switch teams. And it turns out someone just built a brand new multi-billion dollar stadium for them to play in. While OpenAI and Google have been grabbing headlines, Mark Zuckerberg has been quietly building an arsenal of computing power that dwarfs the resources of most countries. And his mission is completely different and arguably far more dangerous. He doesn't just want to build super intelligence, he wants to give it directly to you. Already this morning, news that you've spent even more money with your big announcement about your new supercomputers. We'll get to that, but to start, you took a huge stake in scale AI. You have been on a blitz of AI hiring. Why and why now? Yeah, it's been busy. Um, you know, I think the the most exciting thing this year is that we're starting to see early glimpses of self improvement with the models, which means that developing super intelligence is now in sight, and and we just want to make sure that we really strengthen the effort as much as possible to to go for it. Our mission with the lab is to deliver personal super intelligence to everyone in the world, 
Um, so that way, you know, we can put that power in, in every individual's hand. Um, and I'm really excited about it. It's, it's a different thing than what the other labs are doing. Uh, and, you know, my view is that this is going to be something that is the most important technology in our lives. It's going to underpin how we develop um, everything at, at the company and, um, and it's going to affect society very widely. So we just want to make sure that we get the best folks to work on this from entrepreneurs to researchers to engineers working on the data and infrastructure. And then, of course, we want to back it up with just an absolutely massive amount of compute, which um, which we can support because we have a very strong business model that throws off a lot of capital. Personal super intelligence for everyone. That sounds great, right? Democratic. But let's look at what massive amount of compute actually means. Right now, Meta is on track to own over 350,000 NVIDIA H100 GPUs. That isn't just a lot of computer chips. That is a strategic national resource. We're talking tens of billions of dollars in hardware dedicated to one goal. Zuckerberg's plan is to open source's models, arguing that distributing this power is safer than letting one company control it. But this is the central gamble of our time. Is giving a nuclear reactor to every household the safest way to manage nuclear power? Or does it just guarantee that someone, somewhere, will use it to build a bomb? Zuckerberg is betting the entire future of humanity on the first option. So we have an unstoppable race, funded by infinite money, with a plan to distribute the world's most powerful technology to everyone on Earth. But what is the actual next step that takes us from a fancy chatbot to a true super intelligence? What is the one specific breakthrough that will change everything forever? Sam Ahmed actually told us exactly what to watch for. It's a two-word phrase you need to hear. That's here. It's not evenly distributed yet, but that's happening. Um, I would bet next year that in some limited cases, at least, in some small ways, we start to see agents that can help us discover new knowledge or can figure out solutions to business problems that are kind of very non-trivial. Um, right now, it's, it's very much in the category of Okay, if you've got some like repetitive cognitive work, we can automate it at a kind of a low level on a short time horizon. And as that expands to longer time horizons and higher and higher levels, you know, at some point you get an AI scientist, uh, an AI agent that can go discover new science, and that will be kind of a significant moment in the world. The AI scientist, that's it. That's the threshold. Right now, AI is just remixing human knowledge. It reads the entire internet and spits it back out in a new order. But an AI scientist doesn't just repeat what we know, it discovers things we don't know. Imagine an AI that can design and run a million medical experiments in an afternoon. An AI that can find new laws of physics by sorting through data from the Large Hadron Collider. This is the moment the tool starts outpacing its creator. It's the point where progress goes from linear to exponential. It's the engine that will create the very super intelligence Zuckerberg wants to give you. It all sounds incredible. An unstoppable race to build AI scientists that will grant us personal super intelligence. It sounds like a utopia. So why is the man who invented the core technology behind all of this terrified? Why is Jeffrey Hinton, the godfather of AI, having what sounds like an emotional breakdown over the very thing he unleashed upon the world? I haven't come to terms with what the development of superintelligence could do to my children's future. I'm okay, I'm 77. I'm gonna be out of here soon. But for my children and my, my younger friends, my nephews and nieces and their children, um, I just don't like to think about what could happen. Why? Because it could be awful. In, in what way? Well, if I ever decided to take over, I mean, it would need people for a while to run the power stations until it designed better analog machines to run the power stations. There's so many ways it could get rid of people, all of which would, of course, be very nasty. It would need people for a while. That is the most chilling line in this entire saga. Hinton's fear isn't about Terminator robots, it's about something much more plausible. Irrelevance. Think about it like this. You don't hate ants. You probably don't even think about them. But if you're building a highway and an ant colony is in the path of the bulldozer, you don't stop. You don't negotiate. You just pave over it. 
Not because you're evil, but because your goals are so far beyond the ant's comprehension that their existence is a rounding error. Hinton's great fear is that in the race to build our super intelligent highways to the future, we are the ants. So let's connect the dots one last time. A two week freak out because we're being slowly conditioned to accept the inevitable. No red button because the talent arms race is already out of control. Personal super intelligence for everyone powered by an AI scientist that will accelerate discovery beyond human comprehension and a quiet, terrified warning from its creator that it could all end with us being paved over like ants. The real danger we're overlooking is the massive gap between the confident CEO selling you a product and the terrified scientists who actually understand the science. So the question for you is no longer if AGI is coming. The question is what happens when the people building it can't even agree on whether it's meant to save us or replace us. Let me know who you believe in the comments. And if this analysis helped you see the bigger picture, like this video and subscribe for more deep dives that connect the dots on the technology shaping your future. Stay critical.